Good morning, all of you. Good morning. Uh, today we are here for the guest lecture on the occasion of National Science Day that is uh, celebrated on the summer, uh, Raman effect on the in the commemoration of uh, Professor Raman. Uh, the theme for the this year's uh, Science Day celebration is that that is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future. This is the theme that is announced by our central government for uh, celebrating the National Science Day. And these, uh, this is the Science Day we are celebrated. Uh, MO, we have MOU with uh, Maulana Azad College, Aurangabad. We have two eminent personalities from uh, the Maulana Azad College. First is Professor Sultan Sir, and second is Professor J.D. Sheikh Sir. For that, we have a uh, principal of our JIT college, Dr. Ansari, Honorable Dr. Ansari Muhammad Arun Muhammad Ramzan, sir. Academic and Administrative Coordinator, Dr. Salma Ma'am. Assistant IQSC Coordinator, Dr. Adil, sir. And I am very much thankful to principal of uh, Maulana Azad College, Dr. Mazhar Ahmad Farooqi, sir, for giving us permission for the MOU and for doing such activities under the MOU. For this program, I am nominating the name of the president, the principal of our college, Honorable Dr. Ansari Muhammad Harun Muhammad Ramzan, sir, be a, a president and proposing and seconding his name for the president for today's our, our celebration of National Science Day program and giving his kind permission, taking his kind permission to start the program. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, may I call? Uh, our principal, Dr. Mohammad Harun Mohammad Ramzan, sir, for his presidential speech. Good afternoon to all, all the dignitaries and participants. On behalf of JT Trust and on behalf of JT Art Science Commerce College, I welcome and appreciate all the dignitaries. We know that today we are gathered here to celebrate the National Science Day. Actually, it was first when awarded Dr. C.V. Raman as a Nobel Prize on the Raman effect. So that day, now we celebrate as national. So the aim of behind this, to celebrate this program that the students of especially science to know the basic ideas of the science and easily they inculcate in their mind to go in higher education as well as in research faculty. So I am again thankful and welcome to all of you and I am concluded my speech. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, sir, for your guidance and being our inspiration for organizing such type of program. Now, my call. Dr. Salma, ma'am, our academic and administrative coordinator for the introduction of our college. Assalamu alaikum. And a very good afternoon to all of you. It's a matter of great pleasure and pride that we are celebrating today, National Science Day on 28th February, 2022. It's a collaborative activity under MOU, which is signed in between JT Art Science Commerce College for Women Malegaon Asi and Maulana Azad College of Art Science and Commerce, Aurangabad. I welcome you all on behalf of our Honorable Chairman, Alhaj Ansari Nehal Evan Sahib, principal, staff, and students, I welcome you all. I'm expressing my sincere gratitude to Honorable Principal, 
Dr. Ansari Muhammad Harun Muhammad Ramzan, sir, and Honorable Principal Dr. Mazhar Faruqi, sir, who has who have given their valuable guidance and inspiration and motivation for organizing such type of wonderful activities. And I congratulate the organizing committee, especially the HOD of Botany Department, Dr. Yaya Khan Pathan, sir, uh, along with IQAC coordinator, Professor Munawar, sir, Dr. Momin Adil, sir, Dr. Mohammad Ismail, sir, who struggled hard for organizing this activity that is lecture on National Science Day. I am extremely or highly delighted to express my special thank to honorable resource person of today's guest lecture who are the very prestigious personalities of Malan Azad College of Art, Science and Commerce, the HOD of Zoology Department, Professor Dr. J.D. Sheikh, sir, and Dr. Sayyid Sultan, sir, from Department of Chemistry. He is also a professor. The two most prominent personalities we have with us today we welcome you, sir, on behalf of our college, our management, principal, staff, students. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I may call upon Professor Tahura, teaching associate from Department of Botany, for introducing the guest for the guest, Professor Sultan, sir. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Our first resource person is Dr. Sayyad Sultan, Professor in Chemistry Department, Maulana Azad College, Aurangabad. He has published 60 research papers in national and international journals. He published three books in national level, one book published in Lambert Publication, Germany. He has presented a research paper in University of Malaysia. He has uh, presented several research paper in national and international level. He has completed one minor research project, UGC Pune. He completed one major research project, UGC New Delhi. Over to you, sir, Sultan, sir. Thank you, Dr. Yaya, sir. Respected principal, Dr. Ansari Mohammed Harun. Dr. Mazhar Farooqi, Principal, Maulana Azad College, Aurangabad. Dr. Salma Abdul Sattar, Coordinator, Academic and Administration. Dr. Yahya Khan, Head, Department of Botany. Professor Munawar, Sir, IQR Coordinator. Ms. Hadiya Farooqi, Ms. Nidhi Ansari. Ms. Tahura Firdos, Ms. Musfira Jabin, Teaching Associate. Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon to everyone. I feel very proud to join today's lecture on the occasion of Science Day. We, the people of science, should feel proud to celebrate this occasion. And at the outset of that, I from Azad College, Department of Chemistry, is here to deliver a lecture on 
very interesting topic very burning topic green chemistry i would like to take near about 17 counts to explain today's topic in brief if you go through the history of green chemistry in 1990 the pollution prevention act was passed in us this act helped to create modus operandi for dealing with pollution in an original and innovative way this was the ignition of this topic this paved the way to green chemistry concept then paul anastas and john warner coined the two letter word green chemistry and developed the 12 principles of green chemistry in 2005 raiji noyro identified three key developments in green chemistry use of supercritical carbon dioxide as a green solvent this was very turning point in the science particularly in chemistry research aqueous hydrogen peroxide for clean oxidation and the use of hydrogen in asymmetric synthesis in short i would like to explain what is green chemistry green chemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals with study of development of different procedures for the synthesis of different organic compounds used in different fields concept of green chemistry green chemistry or sustainable environmentally being chemistry is the design of chemical products and process that reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances as a chemical philosophy green chemistry applies to organic chemistry in organic chemistry biochemistry analytical chemistry and physical chemistry so i would say this is very vast field and every field of science should take the help of green chemistry next objective is to minimize waste energy use resource use by maximizing efficiency and utilize renewable resources the best way to conserve our environment is to produce some modules some modus operandi to design chemical reactions in which we used to take some chemicals which are not hazardous use that type of solvent which are not hazardous for example benzene is carcinogenic and that is not allowed in green chemistry it has to be banned totally it produces epoxy diol in our liver after its complete oxidation and therefore it should be totally banned in organic synthesis secondly the product which we want to synthesize should be having minimum environmental effect our main objective is to preserve environment in all total and that's why this field has very importance in global recognition of green chemistry australia the royal australian chemical institute presents australian green chemistry challenge awards canada italy japan uk usa all these countries are taking very hard efforts to develop green chemistry the canadian green chemistry medal is an annual award given to any individual or group of promotion and development of green chemistry this is a boosting element for all scientists in italy green chemistry activities in italy center on inter university constitution known as inca in 1999 inca has given three awards annually to industry for application of green chemistry look at the boasting elements of these countries how they are taking hard effort for conservation of environment next country is japan in japan the green and sustainable chemistry network formed in 1999 is an organization 
consisting of representatives from chemical manufacturers and researchers particularly researchers they focus on researchers because these are the guides which involves many procedures for conservation of en environment by taking help of green chemistry uk and usa is not also behind in the united kingdom the crystal faraday partnership a non profit group founded in 2001 awards businesses annually for incorporation of green chemistry united state environmental protection agency also takes hard effort for green chemistry the nobel prize committee recognized the importance of green chemistry in 2005 by awarding chauvin roberts groves and richard r short the nobel prize for chemistry this is a pride for all chemists and researchers for the development of metathesis method in organic synthesis green chemistry and sustainable development we have very close relationship between these two the united nation defines sustainable development as meeting the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generation green chemistry focuses on how to achieve sustainability through science and technology to better understand and solve the issues of environmental pollution many approaches and models have been developed for environmental impact assessment some of these approaches and models have been successfully in predicting impacts for selecting chemicals in selected environmental settings these models have joined air and water quality aspects to point and non point sources and have been very useful for the development of emission control and compliance strategies however some of the approaches and models were aimed primarily at evaluating the quality of pollutants that could be discharged into environment with acceptable impact but fail to focus on pollution prevention in short i would like to declare that every efforts is now taken for controlling the hazardous effect of all chemicals used in various chemistry research various subject research whenever chemistry is there there must be a chemicals and therefore these all efforts of the scientists are now taken to conserve environment the concept of end of pipe approaches to waste management decrease and the strategies such as environmentally conscious manufacturing eco efficient production or pollution prevention gain recognition the 12 principle of green chemistry my friend these are very important principle that should be counted whoever want to work in green chemistry first one is prevention it is better to prevent waste than to treat or clean up waste after it is formed look at very simple principle it is better to prevent waste than to treat or clean up waste after it is formed after it is formed it is hectic so it is better to prevent waste than to treat or clean up waste after its formation second atom economy synthetic method should be designed to maximize the incorporation of all materials used in the process into the final product and that process is nothing but atom economy third principle is less hazardous chemical synthesis wherever practicable mind you wherever practicable synthetic methodologies should be designed to use and generate substances that possess lethal or no toxicity to human health and the environment to minimize side product which are hazardous we have to focus on the product formation that should be non hazardous or it should have low toxicity next principle is designing safer chemicals chemical product should be designed to preserve efficiency i mean efficacy of function while reducing toxicity safer solvents and auxiliaries the use of auxiliary substances that is solvent separation agents etc should made unnecessary whenever possible and 
in OCS when used to design for energy efficiency. This is very important principle in green chemistry. The use of auxiliary substances like solvents, separation agents should be made unnecessary wherever possible and in when used. Use of renewable feed stock. Energy requirements should be recognized for their environment and economic impact and should be minimized. Synthetic methods should be counted at immediate temperature and pressure. Actually, by taking the advantage of this principle, I particularly published a research paper in a very reputed journal of the CSIR. And in that, I use agricultural waste to remove toxic substances from effluents. And it was very reputed journal. I said it was from the CSIR. Next principle is to reduce derivatives Era material or feedstock should be renewable rather than depleting wherever technically and economically practicable. Next principle is about catalysis. Reduce derivatives. Mind you, reduce derivatives. Unnecessary derivation of different compounds should be avoided whenever possible. Catalytic reagents as selective as possible are superior to stoichiometric reagents. I would say stoichiometric method is traditional and in green chemistry, this has to be avoided by taking another superior way. Next principle is to design for degradation. Chemical products should be designed so that at the end of their function, they do not persist in the environment and break down into innocuous degradation products. And by taking advantage of this principle, we know that many biodegradable chemicals have been synthesized as a byproduct and that are biodegradable by natural forces like light or wind. This is the importance of this principle. Real-time analysis for pollution prevention. Analytical methodologies need to be further developed to allow for real time in process monitoring and control prior to the formation of hazardous substances. Next principle is about inherently safer chemistry for accident prevention. This is also a vital principle used in synthesis of different organic compounds nowadays. Substances and the form of substances used in chemical process should be chosen to minimize potential for chemical accident including releases, explosions, and the firework. Next point is about progress in green chemistry, real world cases. Over the past decade, green chemistry has convincingly demonstrated how fundamental scientific methodologies can be devised and applied to protect human health and the environment in an economically beneficial manner. Significant progress has been made in key research areas such as atom economy, alternative synthetic route, talk and starting materials, biocatalyst, green solvent, biosorption, designing separate chemicals, energy and waste management. My friend, atom economy is also a vital principle used during synthesis. And this is the example that is synthesis of ibuprofen. Atom economy is one of the fundamental principle of green chemistry. Atom economy looks at the number of atoms in the reactant that end up in the final product and byproduct or waste. Percent atom economy is equal to 100 into relative molecular mass of the product divided by relative molecular mass of the reactant. This will give percent atom economy. And that principle is also useful in synthesis of various pharmaceutical drugs like ibuprofen. Alternative synthetic route for feedstocks and starting materials. Production of dimethyl carbonate that is DMC production is a versatile and environmentally innocuous material for chemical industry. Owing to its high oxygen content and blending properties, it is used as a component of fuel. 
traditional method for production of dmc was this method involved the use of phosgen look at the phosgen gas and the methanol as shown below you can see that equation phosgen react with two moles of methyl alcohol to produce dmc and by product is scl two moles nowadays alternative route for the production of dmc is like this this involves the use of copper chloride phosgen is a hazardous chemical methanol oxygen and carbon monoxide look at how that carbon monoxide has to be consumed from environment and these are the uh, chemical equation that are involved in alternative preparation of dmc by using alternative synthetic route for feedstock and starting material this is very important i would say attempt of our beloved scientists all scientists belong to all chemistry they have taken hard effort for this uh, alternative synthetic route for feedstocks and starting materials biocatalysis this is very important procedure that has to be adopted in developing green chemistry and in conservation of environment bio leaching is the extraction of specific metals from their ores through the use of microorganisms such as bacteria i would say this is really a turning point in biochemistry it involves bacteria this is a much cleaner than the traditional heap leaching using cyanide in case of gold extraction extraction of gold look at the procedure this can involve numerous ferrous and sulfur oxides bacteria oxidizing bacteria such as acid thiobacillus ferro oxidant and acid thiobacillus thiooxidant also referred as thiobacillus particularly botany people can understand what is going on look at the help of this bacteria for example bacteria catalyze the breakdown of mineral arsenopyrite by oxidizing the sulfur and metal in this case arsenic ions to higher oxidation state while reducing dioxygen by h2 and fe3 plus ions steric ions this allows the soluble product to dissolve i would like to focus here how the products are soluble in that particular atmosphere and that solubility matters in the conservation of environment this process occurs at the cell membrane of bacteria bacteria uses its body particularly membrane the electron pass into the cells and are used in biochemical processes to produce energy for the bacteria to reduce oxygen molecules to water in stage 2 bacteria oxidizes ferrous to ferric ion while reducing oxygen ferrous to ferric ion oxidation that oxidize the metal to the higher positive oxidation state with the electron gain they reduce ferric to ferrous to continue the cycle the gold is now separated from the ore and in solution this is i would say the novel research in in organic chemistry particularly metallurgy they use biocatalyst bacteria and this is nature nature has no harm to anybody and therefore we should protect by using green chemistry green solvents are also a option in developing sustainability one of the green solvent is supercritical carbon dioxide supercritical carbon dioxide refers to carbon dioxide that is in fluid state while also being at or above both its critical temperature and pressure critical temperature is 31.3 degree celsius while that pressure is 071 psi yielding rather uncommon properties supercritical carbon dioxide has been used as processing solvent in polymer application such as polymer modification formation of polymer composites polymer blending microcellular forming particle production and polymerization so this i would say this green chemistry involves a versatile environment 
it has vast use it has unlimited use look at the industries how they use green solvent and this effort has to be appreciated by all the workers that are working in that industry because they are not facing now toxic chemical effects like benzene it causes cancer bioabsorption is also one of the option it is a important phenomenon which is based on one of the 12 principles of green chemistry use of renewable resources it has gathered a great deal of attention in recent years due to rise in environmental awareness and the consequent severely of the legislation regarding the removal of toxic metal science from waste water developed countries are taking hard efforts my friend developing countries also taking hard effort to maintain environment in recent years a number of agricultural materials such as the following have been used to remove toxic metals from waste water palm husk modified cellulosic material corn cobs residual lignin wool apple residues olive oil products polymerized orange skin banana husk pin back and sawdust poles maize tassels etc etc countless agricultural waste products are also used in the synthesis of different organic compound my one of the phd student recently completed phd particularly apple juices apple juices as a catalyst in synthesis of different organic heterocycles designing safer chemicals in that flame retardants are important flame retardants containing bromine compared to fluorine chlorine and iodine have shown to be the most effective and requires a lower loading of materials brominated flame retardants are structurally diverse group of compounds and bfrs polybrominated diphenyl ethers tetra bromo bisphenol a these are the flame retardants which are being used nowadays in chemical industries to solve that problem of toxicity new flame retardants are d cabromodi phenyl ethane tri bromo phenoxyl ethane penta bromo benzyl acrylate and tris tri bromo neophenyl phosphate next option is to use energy fossil fuel this is a dog with many environmental pollution problems is therefore a growing need for alternative energy resource energy sources to replace fossil fuels energy fossil fuel should be replaced renewable energy resources that are currently receiving attention include solar energy use of nature wind wind energy hydro energy fuel cells to maintain but for i would say energy fossil fuel nowadays are avoided in all the synthetic fuel safer petrol removal of lead from the petrol is also one of the strategy addition of ethanol produced from biomaterial to the petrol fuel addition of methyl tertiary butyl ether to the petrol fuel it is a mtb it has high octane number use of electric vehicles powered by fuel cells nowadays this was the initiative taken by our ministers also government also taking very seriously these matters and lastly i would like to give some concluding remarks the challenges in resource and environmental sustainability require more efficient and benign scientific technologies for chemical processes and manufacture of products green chemistry addresses such challenges by opening a wide and multifaceted research scope thus allowing the invention of novel reactions that can maximize the desired products and minimize the waste and the by products 
as well as the design of new synthetic schemes that are inherently environmentally and ecologically benign therefore combining the principles of the sustainability concept as broadly promoted by the green chemistry principles with the established cost and performance standards will be the continual endeavor for economics for the chemical industry it is therefore essential to direct research and development is efforts toward the goal that will constitute a powerful tool for fostering sustainable invention green chemistry alone cannot solve the process environmental concerns and impacts to our modern era but applying the 12 principles of green chemistry into practice will eventually help to pave the way to world where the grass is greener my friends if you go through this lecture i would like to point out only three counts particularly the researchers which are involved in chemistry biochemistry they should take these principles of the synthesis very seriously if you go through these principles and if you adopt these principles i would say there must be a definite conservation of environment and that could be our uh, contribution for conservation of environment thank you thank you very much thank you sir for uh, such a wonderful presentation and a uh, lecture that you are given that will be beneficial for our students thank you sir thank you thank you sir uh, in spite of your busy schedule that you have also some programs in your college hai you na know? so i am very much yeah, thankful yeah, yeah. to you for uh, no, no, no. thank you sir give, for giving us a precious I eagerly, time i am eagerly waiting for off, offline sessions yeah sir i was i was <laughs> actually i was uh, <laughs> in mood to organize such a thing in a offline mode okay. but uh, due to some uh, ha yeah i understand i understand your problems yeah and one uh, one more program that we have in yesterday night yeah yeah uh, so that's thank why thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you